Hey everyone, Ryan here. Welcome back to Winner's Corner. And with me is Mr. Hobbins Gord. Welcome back. And it looks like today we have a Brooks and Saucony new arrivals in 23 to chat about. So buddy, I'm turning it over to you. You can tell us all about the new exciting arrivals coming into the store. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, yeah, a couple new shoes to, soon to arrive uh, in the Canadian market. Um, Brooks, we have the Hyperion Max expected sometimes mid to latter part of February. And then we have from Saucony the um, the uh, Endorphin Elite. Um, and that one's scheduled, according to the catalog, is like May, March 1st. So, um, so again, very tail end of February to early March. Should see a couple new exciting shoes from both Brooks and Saucony. Um, with the Brooks, um, again, I'm going to show show your viewers sort of the paper rendition from the catalogs from the suppliers. Um, give them an idea what to anticipate, what to look for. Um, going through the the lightweight category shoes from uh, Brooks, you, they start off with the Tempo, the uh, Hyperion Tempo. Um, again, it's the uh, the most racing flat. When I say racing flat, more of the classic running racing flat that suppliers used to offer quite consistently. Um, but it's made with the DNA flash midsole material. Um, and the DNA flash, um, it will have, um, it's a lighter weight material. And again, to help refresh some people's memories as far as the DNA portion of it, um, no, it's not you, you like the double helix we see when we look at the old um, uh, personalized or or your own blood work and that sort of thing to see your family's genes and that sort of stuff. Um, but the DNA uh, loft or DNA in this case the flash, what they do and they're going back to old high school chemistry class uh, where they mix cornstarch and water together to get this real goopy, gooey type substance. And the theory behind the DNA midsole material with Brooks is if you have that big, uh, like a bathtub size full of this cornstarch and water mixture, and if you step into it slowly, your foot sinks right into, into the material. Um, and it's kind of gooey, that sort of thing. You go to take it out. Um, but if you if you run over that and you hit it with us with the element of a really fast speed, while well, that DNA, that DNA material in their case, their DNA midsoles, it'll become a little firmer the harder you hit on it. Tom. So it, the advantage to that from a running perspective is when you're running fast, you want the shoe to hit the ground and respond and react fairly quickly. If your foot hits the ground and sinks into a really soft midsole material, you're losing a little bit of that energy into that softness, and then your foot transfers forward and finally gets that element of kick. So the beauty of the DNA midsoles is if you're doing a slow, easy run, you want it to feel a little bit softer. So you typically, you're taking more time going through the gait cycle. So it's going to be a little softer underfoot. When you're running in a high speed, doing a bit faster paced workout, intervals, those sorts of things, you want that quick responsive type feel. Um, that's where the DNA uh, midsole sort of excels in, in that sense. Now, the tempo is a non-plated shoe, so it's just relying along the, the uniqueness of the uh, DNA flash midsole material. Again, it's an 8 mil drop shoe. Um, when you go into the Hyperion Elite, which is the next step up, um, you're getting you're still the same DNA flash. You're getting a little bit more of it, so it's a little bit thicker. But now you're getting the, um, a, a nylon plated type shoe, if I remember correctly. Actually, you don't. Need them. Uh, there is a bit of a plate in there. So it does have a little bit of a, a spring effect with it as well. Um, and you can see how it's sculpted back in the back end here. Um, my feeling is, uh, again, this is just, a, I'm just a shoe guy. Um, the back end, it's almost squared off at the back end. Um, and then when they square it off this way, I prefer to see if they square it off this way, 
because if like most people, if you go out with the intent to run and maintain your 540 pace um, that I hear rumors of people running these days, um, they, they, when they start off at a 540 pace, reality says, okay, they're going to be striking more midfoot, more midfoot um, for in the forefoot area because they're running at slightly faster pace. But as they start to slow down, they're going to start to heel strike more and more. When they're heel striking on a shoe that has that squared off back end, the shoe might come down and might kind of slap them in rather, rather than rolling more smoothly through the gait cycle. So there are some companies that I really like to sort of say, okay, just angle it just a little bit more and you'll find it'll be a friendlier shoe from that heel strike to mid stance phase when they start to slow down. Um, sort of thing. So some shoe companies offset that with the big swallow tail at the back end. Um, and again, that swallow tail just encourages contact a little sooner. And then the materials are so soft at the heel strike area, it should transition or roll a little bit more fluidly. Um, so again, that's the Hyperion Elite. Um, jumping up, uh, it's again still the eight mil drop. Um, and jumping up as far as uh, the, the weight of the shoe. I believe the tempo that I talked about first was like 7.3 ounces in the women's. And if we go to the, if I went to the comp comparable one, according to their catalog, uh, it's a unisex thing. It's 8.1. So one ounce, uh, no, not even, not even a, a third of an ounce heavier uh, going up into the Hyperion Elite type shoe. So, um, and then when you go to the, the Hyperion Max, um, it's going to be the new shoe for Brooks. Uh, again, to look at it, looks something like an Elite. If you look at the profile of the shoe, again, looks something like the Elite from that perspective. Um, still an 8 mil drop shoe, a little lighter than the Elites. So getting close to the, um, the, the tempo. Um, according to the catalog, it's going to be 7.8 ounces. And if I go to the men's launch, 7.3. So it's half an ounce uh, heavier than what the tempos are, but you're getting more midsole. You're getting the midsole very similar to the uh, thickness of what the Hyperion Elite is, um, an 8 mil offset. Um, you're also getting the shoe that has a, uh, um, they enhanced the rocker at the back end and also in the forefoot and it has the carbon plate in it. So it's going to, it's going to roll from that heel strike, hopefully a little bit smoother than what this does in the event that the person is heel striking. Um, and it's going to be a little bit more fluid feeling from that perspective. So the big thing is they they've, increase the thickness of the sole underneath the foot. That's where the max comes in. Um, it will come as a price. The max is coming out at $220 or $219.95 here in Canada. Um, so I'm not sure what it is on, uh, down in your neck of the woods there, Ryan. But um, from that perspective, um, again, not too far off for a carbon-plated shoe. It's one of the more reasonably priced ones that will be on the market. So again, looking forward to it. Um, the midsole, if I remember correctly, they do, um, the, yeah, they're still using the DNA flash midsole material. So again, the lightest weight of the DNA midsole materials that Brooks has in their lineup. Um, and uh, it has more of a, of a traditional heel cup. It's gonna have the heel cup more along the lines of what the tempo has. Whereas the Elite has a little bit more of a, of a sock type liner, has a little bit of a, a shelf inside or, or a shell inside, but it's definitely not a thermal plastic one. Again, why they do that with some shoes is they're just trying to lighten the shoe up as much as they possibly can when they go into uh, making these lightweight carbon performance type shoes. Um, Durability wise, again, it's still going to be your like go-to shoe for the, the long race, the day of race. Uh, it's not a shoe you're going to pound out a lot of big miles in as far as the Hyperion Max goes. Um, so again, um, 
if a person's in that market, um, use it use it for the special days uh, when you really want to uh, maintain your position on the podium. Um, that'll be your go-to type shoe. So um, <clears throat> going into the sock in these shoes, um, they have the new Endorphin Elite. Uh, one surprise was when I first saw the sample and was able to put it on my foot and that sort of thing, is um, you know, from the aesthetics of it, looks like, wow, this shoe's going to be really, really light. It is light, uh, but the big shock was when you, when you look at the, the, the pictures of it, uh, they really like taken away a lot of the upper fabric and the material from the upper of the shoe. So you think, okay, yeah, a lot of weight is being removed from the shoe. When you look at the weight of it in their catalog, they identify it as, if I remember correctly, you gotta find it here. Um, uh, men's was uh, 204 grams. And if I go right over to the next page to Endorphin Pro 3 and their specs, and you go to the men's, and look, it's 204 grams. It's it's the same weight as what the Pro 3 is. So you're not saving on the weight end of it. What I think you're doing is you're going to get a shoe in the back end. I know I'm going to pull up the Pro. Uh, the Pro has a heel cup in the back, like a, a just a little bit of a cup that comes up here. It doesn't wrap around in this area. I'm not sure how well if I if I show that there's a bit of mesh there that little bit of mesh that you're seeing through the outside um, of the shoe. The heel counter would normally be there in some shoes, and that's the same on both sides, if I, if you can see the light going through it on the back side. Again, that's decreasing the weight of the standard Endorphin Pro. Um, so again, still getting a super lightweight. They've put holes in the tongue of the Pro, so again, keeping it lightweight. Um, so when you go to the Endorphin Elite, um, they've taken away, again, a little bit more even in the back end of the shoe as far as the heel cup, if there was a heel cup. But they're sculpting up the, the midsole around the base of the heel. So the, just the structure of the midsole mold, that'll give you a sense of stability when you do come down at a little point of heel strike underneath your foot. Um, they do have increased the height of the shoe as far as the thickness. It's now going to be a 40 mil stack height in the heel, so right at the sort of maximum allowable limit for a legal shoe. And the forefoot is 32 mil drop. When it go into the, the, the Pro, um, the, it's 39.5 and 31.5 so again a half a millimeter uh thinner under the forefoot and in the heel so again they they save a little weight going into the elite and they that's where they maybe um they saved weight on here by cutting out the upper taking away part of the heel counter in the shoe uh from that perspective um and the other thing I find with this one, if you're running in an area where um, they may or may not do a good job with keeping the uh, city streets clean with debris and things like that, you might be getting stuff in your shoes more quick, more easily. Like uh, if, if you kick up a little bit of rocks or whatever, they might get in your shoe a little bit easier. I wear my shoes so loosely tied in the back end, I will constantly get stuff in just just through the loose opening in the top from that perspective so so um again this one coming for they say inter introductory is the 21st of february so here in canada that might put it close to march 1st type time frame uh retail on the shoe on the endorphin elite um if any of you viewers out there are not sitting down you might want to have a seat you're looking 350 for for that one. So again, it's gonna that might also uh, limit the number of people who will want to wear that expensive a shoe for those special events. Again, it's not touted as their put the big mileage in the shoe, 
it's basically on the day of the race. Yeah, you're you're looking to secure one of the positions on the on the podium, that sort of thing. Um, it, again, and it's mechanically, it's there. This category of shoes are all from a very neutral type of gate. So if a person is a, is a, in need of some sort of more stable uh, or more stability, they're either putting an insert in the shoe to give that shoe a little bit more stability than what it provides off the shelf, or they're, I, I'm, I'm going to suggest go down in the sock design, go down to the shift. Um, the shift, um, again, having it's built on the same sort of uh, specs is what the endorphin <clears throat> series of shoes are with, with the Saucony. So it has the big thick soles, uh, does not have the, the plate, but it just has more of the standard power run midsole material rather than the, um, or sorry, the ever run um, um, material. Uh, and it's a little bit of on the firmer side, just from the get go. Um, you look at the profile, they filled it in on this side rather than notching it out through through this side that notching of this shoe really makes this shoe ought to give you force your foot to, to pronate a little bit extra so it's forcing your mechanics to become a little bit more e efficient at dispersing that shock but if a person who is already over pronating you don't want to compound that effect and cause inner knee pain or or shin splints those sorts of things so the shift would be the, the safer way to go for those people because this combination of filling in that little bit of a gap, giving the shoe a little firmer midsole, it's just going to be a little firmer ride, a little bit more stable ride. And think, again, a lot of the benefits of the shoe from a, a running faster perspective, it's got that nice rockered sole. It's got the slightly more robust midsole. When I talked about the Brooks previously and talked about the DNA and how it has the feature of you hit and run fast and you hit, it's, it's a, a little firmer feel. Well, this is that, that same concept. When you hit the firmer midsole, you're not sinking into the softness, the plushness of the shoe. It's going to react fairly quickly and give you a good solid takeoff fast so from that perspective. So again, the shift a little bit more reason to price, if I remember correctly, $189.95 in the Canadian market. So it's, again, very compatible. And it's a shoe you can put the miles, mileage in with it and still get that sense of a performance shoe, but still do workout after workout in it and get like a good consistent season out of the shoe before you have to replace it. Whereas when you get into the lightweight, some of these carbon shoes, you're getting, if a person's going to run maybe three halves, one or two marathons in a season, um, that would be the performance you for those five events. And you might do two or three slightly shorter workouts, but faster, just to let you know that, yeah, I really, I really like the feel that shoe. That's going to be my race day type shoe. Um, another shoe that sort of... <clears throat> Again, does give almost a fit and feel like the Endorphin Pro and soon to be the Endorphin Elite type performance would be your your Endorphin Speed. Um, the Endorphin Speed, if you notice <clears throat> on the latest version, has this little bit of a plastic plate on the outside, has the same complementary type plastic plate on the inside. That is the nylon plate that's in the shoe. So where the Pro has the carbon plate in the shoe. The Speed has the nylon plate. The nylon plate just gives the shoe a little bit more resiliency, a little bit more life as far as that repeated step on it, load the spring and give you the spring effect. It's not quite as springy. It's not quite as give you that sense of bounce late in the long run. It does give you a little bit, but it does give you more durability to do the long runs do the long races and get again like the shift get a decent season out of these guys as far as uh, putting on the miles on the shoe um and this one is coming in at 200 if i remember correctly uh in the canadian market sorry gone up to 210 209.95 here in canada from that perspective so again uh 
it's been a uh, interesting category. Um, there are there have been some brands that have been like uh, home run shoes for a lot of, of the retailers. Um, the Speed is probably still our one of our number one shoes for us because of the the fit the feel. People love the the Ever Run PB um, midsole material, uh, which is in the Pro as well, and soon to come the the Endorphin Elite. Um, so again, Saucony I think is is right now near the front of that pack. Uh, we have a few others. New Balance has the RC um, or the TC Elite uh, with theirs. Um, so from that perspective, a lot of good ones out there. And then there are some that are not too bad, but mm, you might find a good sale prices <laughs> on them these days. So if you do your homework and you, you know, you're looking for a category like that, and you're only looking for the shoe for the the half marathon day of race or the marathon day of race, um, yeah, go try on a few of the ones that that you you think would fit and feel really good. So say, put on the pro on one foot and put on a couple of the other possible sale options, and see if you surprise yourself and save some money and go to one of these, especially if you're only going to get like a handful of true performances out of it before the the carbon plate becomes a little bit too not as springy as it, as it should be or could be from a durability perspective so i hope those things help you as far as your look for the lightweight carbon plated type shoes when you're going out there for this year's running season if i said something today that uh, contradicts something that we knew of before, feel free to reach out to Ryan and he he will uh, contact me and sort of get some clarification on it. Um, and again, unfortunately, uh, until ours physically get here, I can't pull, show them and play with them in front of you and, and give you my, uh, now, okay, now we've had a few miles put into them. Um, uh, for now, I just, you have what the suppliers provided me as far as the technical literature um so uh if you can remember to like uh possibly share the video and uh you can reach out to brian if you want to see something or hear about something that's uh on the market or about to be on the market and we'll do our best to get the details for you uh, with that i'm going to turn it back to ryan and uh we'll see you soon Gord, thank you so much again for your wisdom, knowledge, and absolutely our viewers are, are, are no one's in it now, and if we make a mistake, I will hear about <laughs> it in the comments. <laughs> Thanks again, Gord. Have yourself a great weekend coming up. Everyone, get outside, crush it, and we'll stay tuned for another exciting chat with Gord in an upcoming episode. Have yourself an amazing weekend coming up.